What's going on guys? This is Chandler Smith and I am always the guy that is pushing you super hard to purchase real estate. However, in this video, I'm going to help you know whether you should invest in real estate or whether you should not. And we're going to cover some very valid points on why you should not invest in real estate. All that I ask you to do is make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell. So just take two seconds, hit that like button and let's jump into the reasons that you should not purchase real estate. All right, guys, I wanna be very upfront with you. I have made a video with this title before. However, before I shared all of the positives of real estate and I was kind of sarcastic as to why you should not buy it. That is not what this video is. As a matter of fact, this video is an honest and upfront video where I've had the opportunity to do dozens of consulting calls with different people that have said, Chandler, I'm thinking about getting into real estate. This is my situation with my business or with my family or with my finances or with my life. And my advice has actually been, you know what? Right now is not a good time for you to purchase real estate. And so in this video, I'm gonna go through some of the things that you need to look at so that you can make the decision whether your money should go towards your family or your business or your savings or your debt in comparison to putting it into real estate so that after watching this video, you will know whether you should put your money into one of those other things or whether you should start investing in real estate. So with all of that being said, Let's jump into it. All right, guys, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name's Chandler and I've been investing in real estate for the last eight years. I currently own over $14 million of real estate and I truly believe that everyone and their dog should invest in real estate once they get to the right place. And so first off in this video, I wanna start off with one of the biggest reasons that you should not invest in real estate and that is being in a bad financial place. It is so crucial when you purchase an investment property that you have at least six months reserves and that you are in a place where you can afford the down payment and continue to provide for you and your family while also keeping those six months reserves. I see so many people that come and say, Chandler, I wanna buy this duplex and live in half of it, or I wanna buy a home and use it as a rental or whatever you wanna do. You need to make sure that you've got six months reserves, that you've got a consistent job, that you have the money for a down payment so that you're not over leveraged or in a place where purchasing real estate becomes super stressful and potentially could end up getting you burned. I have a lot of people that call me and they're like, hey Chandler, like I'm struggling, I'm living paycheck to paycheck. I see that you've been successful investing in real estate, so I really wanna do that. And the first thing that I'll tell them is, look, you've gotta get your finances right. You've gotta get to a place where you've got a savings, where you've got reserves, where you can afford a down payment. Even if you're gonna go and put 3.5% down, you still need enough for 3.5% down and six months reserves. And I would not have you purchase real estate unless you can get that because I hate to see people go and overextend themselves and then a water heater goes out or something else happens where now they're throwing money on a credit card and they're getting themselves in a terrible place because they wanted to get into real estate. Don't do that. Now that transitions into the next thing I wanna talk about and that is credit card debt. If you have money on your credit card and you're thinking about using a big check you just got as a down payment for a property rather than for a credit card, that is absolutely stupid. Usually people are paying 12 or as much as 25%, maybe even higher for debt that they've borrowed putting it on their credit card and they'll say, yeah, Chandler, I've got you know, $10,000 worth of credit card debt, but I finally saved $10,000 so that I can invest in a property. My advice to you would be, look, pay off your crappy debt, all right? Credit card debt, sucks and that will eat you alive. And even if you get an investment property to try and then make your payments on your credit card or you're trying to get creative or whatever else, I just don't think that that is a smart option. Now I have seen some people that have done flips and they've really taken a gamble because they see a huge upside for a property. That's running a business and that's a little different than a buy and hold situation. And if you wanna go that route, you do you because you're taking out debt to run a business, but if you're in a place where you've got 10, 20, $30,000 in credit card debt, and you're gonna go and buy a property that you know maybe is gonna cash flow a couple thousand dollars a year for you, that to me doesn't make sense. Pay off your debt, that's going to get the highest return on your money. Now, a lot of people will also ask Chandler, what about student loans or lower interest loans? Here's the deal, if you can save up money and you've got some debt where you're paying three to 5%, it's very little. In my mind, if you can get a return from investing your money that is going to be a higher percentage than the interest you're paying on your debt, 
then yeah, it probably makes sense to invest in a rental property that's gonna give you a 15% return so that you can then use that money to pay off this debt with very low interest rate, especially if it's a fixed interest rate, it's not going up, it's on student loans or something else, and it's super low. I personally would advise you, yeah, if you're making great money and you can just let that debt sit there and you've got a better place for your money, then put it in the better place. But I also see people that haven't put together a business. They don't understand how to find deals. They're still months and months out before being to a place where they could actually purchase a rental property and they've gotten to a place where they're also you know, making a pretty good income. You should probably still just pay off your debt so that you're not worried about that because getting a 5% return on your money is better than getting no return, especially if three months down the road, you're still not going to own an investment property and you're gonna be making more money so you could afford to have paid off your debt and still be able to purchase the investment property when you're ready. All of these things to me make sense because if you've got super high interest, pay that off. If it's super low interest and you've got a good investment that can get you a higher return, then use your money for that. But only, again, only do it if you've got proper reserves and you've got enough for the down payment and you can still afford to live well, which rolls into my next point. I've seen people that have decided they're going to live off of ramen for years to be able to pull it off. Now, I'm all about being frugal early on. I'm about being smart. However, I think that you need to feed your body good food. I think that you need to take care of your health and your personal situation because if you're walking around in total raggedy clothes, you're not eating good food, that's going to mess with your body, that's going to mess with your psyche, and you're not going to have the confidence to go and make money and then to invest it properly. And I know that sounds crazy, but for me, making sure that I am dressed nice, making sure that my body is healthy and taken care of are a much bigger priority than purchasing real estate because doing those things are going to make me more money so that then I can afford real estate. So please take care of yourself. Make sure that you're still getting to enjoy things every week. And even if it's little things, you don't have to splurge, but go and do fun stuff. Don't penalize yourself or wear crappy clothes or put crap into your body. That should be priority number one. Now, you don't have to overspend on those things. I'm not saying spend thousands and thousands of dollars and go and get your Gucci purse or whatever. I'm saying buy good clothes so that you've got the confidence to excel in your job or your business or whatever else you're doing so that you can make the money to be able to invest and so that you can have a clear head to invest properly. Now, this segues perfectly into the next reason that you should not buy real estate, and that is if you have a better place to put that money. If it's going to get a higher return here than it is in real estate, put the money here. Now, I'm sure a lot of your minds are going to throwing it in on GameStop and watching it go to the moon. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is I have a lot of friends that own a small business and their business has exploded. They've had a 500% growth in customers and income and everything else and they come to me and say, Chandler, I'm killing it. I'm making great money. We grew like crazy this year. Should I put my money into my business or should I put my money into real estate? And so my question to them is this, how much money would you make putting it into your business compared to how much of a return you would get putting it into real estate? And almost always their answer is, well, I know that if I could put this extra 20 grand into my business and hire someone else or add in this extra system or you know do extra advertising, I could increase my income tenfold next year. And so my answer to that is, why on earth would you ever invest in real estate if you have a booming business that's growing and you know if you put your money into that business that it's going to pay you a higher return? And so don't be surprised by this. I've had so many business owners that have come to me and paid for a consulting call and said, Chandler, this is my situation. Should I invest in real estate or in my business? And I have to be honest with them and say, look, I know you want to build an empire. I know you want to own real estate, but if that money will pay a higher return and you have a place to put it right now in your business, then put it back into your business. Wait until your business gets to a point where you don't know how to put money and grow your business faster. And at that point, then it's time to start shelving money and putting it into real estate. But if you're in a growth phase in your business and it's paying you a super big return, then put the money there rather than putting it into real estate. 
Now, the only exception I would give to these small business owners is if you're in a place where you're living in a tiny apartment, you finally have good income coming in, and you're like, you know what, Chandler, I really would like to get into a home for my family. We've already got kids. You know, we're wanting to build our family and, and settle down in a place where I can have my in-home office, I can feel good about my kids being in a better neighborhood and better schools and all of these other things. For me, if you've got the money at that point, that will also help your business and you can get into real estate, whether you buy a fourplex or even if you buy a single family home, I don't think it's a bad investment to purchase real estate that you're going to live in. And I know a lot of people will disagree with me, but there's something to be said for owning the property you're living in, saving money on rent because it'll be cheaper while also giving you more space. And for me, that makes sense because now you can get equity, you can lower what you're paying if you would have been paying to rent compared to owning it, and you're in a place that you can settle down, you can pick the neighborhood, and you can gain even more confidence in yourself, in your business, in your in-home office, when you do meetings at home, especially with all the craziness that's going on. If you're working out of home, it makes sense to purchase a property. And so that might be one exception where it's like, you know what, maybe it's smart to purchase our home and not put that money into my business. But again, if you're comfortable in your apartment, maybe it's not. That's just one place where I can find an exception to that rule. The next reason you should not buy real estate is if the numbers don't work. Now, this could be because you can't get proper financing. This could be because you can't find a good deal. Whatever it is, don't buy real estate if the numbers don't work. You need to hold off because I've seen so many people go and buy a crappy deal and then regret it. It's not worth throwing money in just to get your foot wet. Now, your first deal is not gonna be as good as your last deal because you're gonna get better at what you do, but you should still set criteria and hold to those criteria and not buy a crappy deal. Now, this next one is more a very strong opinion on my end, but I do believe it's a true principle, and that is that you should not buy real estate if you're not going to treat it like a business. And what I mean by this is delegation. You need to get a management company, you need to build a team that handles your stuff, because if you're in a job where you're making good money and that's provided you the ability to purchase a rental property, put your extra time into that job to make more money, to buy more rental properties, not into managing your property and dealing with the fixes and dealing with the tenant calls, because almost 100% of the time, I have found that spending your time on your rental property as an owner that does everything that will pay you less per hour than putting your time into your business or into your job now if I'm wrong and you want to make your job managing properties and you do that for a living that's awesome because you're going to make more doing that because you're gonna have the right systems in place and again because it will be treated as a business but if it's your side thing and you're trying to do it all and run a business as a side thing you're going to get burned and you're gonna end up getting paid less per hour than you would just putting that time somewhere else and making more money and systemizing everything with your rental property so that you don't have to worry about it. So make sure if you buy real estate, you treat it as a business. And if you're not willing to do that, don't buy real estate. Now, there are always exceptions, and the only exception I'll give you is if you do have a low-paying job and you know how to manage a property and you're buying a multi-unit family and you're living in one of those units, yeah, maybe it makes sense to manage your property because that's going to pay you better than whatever your job is. But if that's the case, I would also push you to maybe find a different job where you can make more. And if that's not an option for you, then maybe it does make sense to manage your own property. All right, guys, we have covered all of the reasons that you should not buy real estate. However, I'm hoping this video didn't scare you away from buying real estate. I'm hoping it kind of gave you a roadmap so you know everything you need to do to be in the right place to purchase real estate. Because if you can put yourself in the right place and it makes sense and then you buy real estate, it is going to be a huge blessing in your life. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell because I'd love to see you in the future videos where my goal is to help you to build a huge passive income. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day.